All right, welcome to week four of the Friday Night Frenzy. Alongside Andy, I'm Rob. A lot of weather-affected games tonight, so we'll do our best to bring you up to speed on which games were postponed and when they'll finish as we move through the show. Yeah, that's right. We start at Lafayette, Jeff. The Broncos hosting the Harrison Raiders. Last year, these two teams combined for 104 mm -hmm. points. A game the Broncos won 54-50. to 50. A lot different game this season. A lot different. The Broncos and Raiders captain shaking hands before the game. The Broncos putting a solid drive together early. Matt Wilkerson rolls out away from the pressure, fires the sideline. Jay Siegel makes the catch for first down. Different look now. Bishop Johnson in at QB. Hits Cade Bishop right in the dome. And Jamie Cassad is there for the interception. Good break for the Raiders. And they take advantage. Jonathan McGuire takes the snap, floats one up right into the waiting arms of Adam Sturgeon. Perfect pitch and catch. After a failed two-point conversion, Raiders take a 6-0 lead. Broncos having trouble getting anything going on offense. Wilkerson chased down from behind by Butch Knox for the sack. Broncos forced to punt. Starting to rain at Jeff. Raiders turn to Dawson Danke on the ground. The junior back is gone. Raiders lead 12-0, and that's when the game was called for the night. Harrison up 12-0 with 8.01 left in the third quarter. That game will be finished tomorrow morning at 11.30 a.m. A big NCC clash in Kokomo tonight. The McCutcheon Mavericks making to look at, making to look at, make it easy that for me a, to say, Andy. Right three there. in a row against the Cavs. Three wins in a row, that is. Mavs driving inside Kokomo territory. Bade Williams lets it rip, but the Cats, Luke Cameron there for the interception. Obviously, that's trouble for the Mavs. That's a pick six. Mavs driving again. Williams fakes the handoff, and he fakes the cameraman out, fakes everyone out. He rolls down the sideline, breaks a couple tackles, and that's a touchdown. Big win for McCutcheon. They go on to take it 13-6, now 3-1 and one on the season. Were there lights on at that game? <laughs> West Lafayette Red Devils went all the way up to the south side of Chicago tonight to play Crete Moni. On fourth and one, West Side's Mikey Kidwell draws back, and it's a wide-open Luke Staten, and it may be a torrential downpour, but Staten has plenty of daylight. Red Devils up 7 to zip. On the kickoff, Anton Pozniak kicks a squib to the Warriors, and West Side would force a fumble and get the ball right back with great field position. That turnover would set up this play. Kidwell under center, and he is going to deal with a lot of pressure, rolling out and firing a bomb on the run, and wide receiver Caleb Green comes down with it on the five-yard line. So Westside hurries up, as they normally do, and they would hand it off to Sage Hood, who dives his way in for the touchdown. Only 25 seconds between touchdowns, and that would be all they need. Westside holds on to win this one, 14 to 13, the final. Meanwhile, at Benton Central, Kevin O'Shea and Central Catholic eyeing their 19th straight win, dating back to last year. The Knights visiting the Bison, already leading seven to nothing. Ben Metzinger on the counter. Metzinger taking it down to the one yard line. The very next play, Jacob Page punching it in for six, and CC doubles up its lead, 14 to nothing. The score now 21 to zip Central Catholic. The Knights. Pulling out the screenplay, Avery Denhart hooking up with Metzinger, and this time number 17 not to be denied. Metzinger is gone like the wind, and CC absolutely running away with this one, 28 to nothing. And when it rains, it pours for Benton Central. Blake Moore rolling out of the pocket. His pass is picked off by who? Page, and the Knights cashing in off the turnover. Guess who scores this one? I'm thinking Paige. Yeah, it is Paige. <laughs> Central Catholic rolls on this one, 42 to nothing the final. The game called due to inclement weather in the second quarter. All right, that does it for the first half of the frenzy. Four games down, still six more to go. Coming up, we'll make stops at Delphi, Frankfurt, Pioneer. And Clinton Central, the Bulldogs looking to give North White its first loss of the season. We'll tell you how Jim Davis' squad did when the frenzy continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Frenzy. Earlier in the show, we ran a story regarding Twin Lakes Rensselaer Central Showdown, one of several games affected by weather this evening. Less than a minute into that game, fans were evacuated from the field and into the gym. Yeah, while we do not have highlights from the Indians Bombers matchup, we were in Delphi for the Oracles game against Indianapolis, Washington. Storm clouds moving in over Birdo Field. Delphi's defense also moving on its opponent. A host of Oracles dropped Kalen Curtis for the loss. Indy Washington also stepping up. Delphi's Weston Wendell's pass is tipped and picked off by Washington's Marquez Nichols. Lots of defense early in this game. Oracle's track down Washington's Jalen Weathers. The Oracle offense finally waking up. Wendell launching this one downfield to Blake Carroll inside the red zone. 
That drive ended, though, with a missed field goal. Later, Wendell decides to keep it for the first down. Then Wendell passing to Dylan Hart, and Hart taking it deep into continental territory. A couple plays later, Wendell on the keeper, and he runs the 10-yard touchdown. Oracle skips the shutout, 34-0 to the final. In Frankfurt, the Hot Dogs playing host to Crawfordsville. Athenians running the Wildcat offense in this one. A direct snap to Trent Johnson and not our friendly State Farm agent. Shakes off a few defenders, keeps moving. He's taken down around midfield. Later in the drive, direct snap once again. This time, Caden Jones runs it up the middle. He breaks the plane and it is signaled a touchdown. Athenians now to attempt the PAT, but a little trickery. It is a fake throw to running back Dalton Bridgewater for the two-point conversion. Fooling everybody. Third down for the Hot Dogs, QB Matt Snell. The handoff to Malik King runs toward the sideline, cuts back, tries a little spin move, uh, and he's finally dragged down a few plays later. The handoff once again to King, who runs through the middle and runs it in for the touchdown. Frankfurt leads this one 24-16 in the third quarter. The game will resume tomorrow at 5 p.m. All right, Sheridan hosting Carroll tonight. Second quarter action. Carroll's Trey Philbrun firing it downfield to, well, the wrong guy. Sheridan's Brody Perry with the interception. Does a great job keeping his feet in bounds. Sheridan ball, but a similar scene unfolding. This time, Carroll's Kenny Burnell gets even with an interception of his own. Some issues completing passes on both teams, if you couldn't tell. Under two to go in the half. Brody Perry once again coming up big on defense, breaking up the pass. Carroll's defense pitches a shutout. Cougars pick up an impressive win to remain unbeaten, 13-0 the final. All right, over at Clinton Central, it's homecoming for the Bulldogs. They host the North White Vikings. Viking QB Jake Quasabart drops back, looks for an open receiver, but he is dragged down in the backfield by the Bulldog linebacker for a loss, big loss. Bulldogs drive now. Keenan Orr rolls out to his left, looking for an open wide out. Let's loose, connects with Joe Douglas. Keeps his feet chopping for a few more yards. Or now with a quick handoff to Douglas, who runs one way and spins and goes back the other way. Little Johnny Manziel action here, huh? Stiff arms the defender, hits the afterburner, is heads for the edge, gets a block, uh, puts the Bulldogs in the red zone with that run. Running back Reed Kreit gets the call, runs it up the middle, extending the lead 14-0. This game also delayed. It will be played tomorrow. 14-0 sent Clinton Central. When there we go. Tonight. The Pioneer Panthers playing host to the Caston Comets tonight before the rain started to fall. Caston on offense, nowhere to go for Brady Hartman, but somehow Hartman gets the pass off to Casey Alt and catches this one for no gain. Alt then gets the ball, but he finds himself swallowed up by the Panther defense. No gain for Alt. I think you guys can pick up on the trend here. Hartman pitches the ball to his tailback, and he too finds himself tackled behind the line. The Comets turn the ball over on downs. Pioneer on offense, one play. One score. It was that easy tonight for the Panthers. Jack Kaiser to Nick Barkas. Barkas too fast for the defense. Pioneer takes this one away from the comments. 62 to nothing, the final. <laughs> Last stop on the frenzy trail tonight up in Winnemac. Picked this one up. The Warriors on offense. Looking pretty good here. Look at that rain. Guess no lightning up there, so they played. Matt Shorter with the handoff. Knocked out of bounds inside the 30. Once again, they give it to Shorter. Nowhere to go this time. Tackled as soon as he gets back to the line. LaVille now taking over after Warriors fumble. Winnemac comes up with a nice stop on defense, but they would get shredded on the very next play. The quarterback pitch to Mason Lead, and Lead leads the Lancers into the end zone for an easy six in an absolute monsoon, it would appear. This one suspended at the half like many of our other games. LaVille leading 14 to six. All right, no coach this week since many of our games are not yet finished, as you've seen. We'll leave you with some of the other scores from the area and start times for the games that have been postponed to tomorrow. If you did miss anything during the show, you can find the information right here shortly on WLFI.com. Have a great night. We'll see you next week.